Hello and welcome back to all of you. So uh, yesterday we were talking about uh, second semester foundation course number four. Grammar is what we spoke about yesterday. So I'm going to continue with grammar today. Uh, so what we spoke about yesterday was the fundamentals in terms of the parts of speech that you had been going through. So let's take a quick look what we learned yesterday. So yesterday we learned what grammar is all about, that it's a it's a system, it's a structure, it's not essentially a rule. People usually say grammar rules, but it's a structure. But the rules do exist in terms of uh, placement of words, in terms of what should come first, what should come next, in terms of certain tense forms. Uh, for example, I was talking about subject verb agreement. There are certain rules that you got to follow. So, and we, we looked at uh, the parts of speech, what the parts of speech are, noun, pronoun, adjective verb, adverb, preposition, interjection, and conjunction. We looked at uh, the types of noun, common noun, proper noun, abstract noun, count, noun count, collective, singular, plural, possessive, and compound noun. All right. Post which we went to pronoun, which essentially replaces a noun. Uh, here now we, we did couple of exercises post which we went to pronoun which essentially replaces a noun and then we did some more exercises to understand how it works then we looked at adjective now adjective is something which describes or modifies noun or pronoun we looked at the types of adjective in terms of it defines a quality it can define the quantity as well as it can be demonstrative we looked at the possessive form in terms of singular and plural and we did a lot of exercises yesterday. Then we moved on to verb. In verb we did, uh, we basically we understood verb forms in terms of action, uh, actually what verb means and how it's connected with tense. We looked at the four forms in terms of base form, ing form which is continuous form, it could be past continuous present or future, past tense and past participle. We did some more exercises yesterday, right? And we also looked at how verb is directly in sync with tense because when there is an action, there has to be a time assigned to it. These are the questions that we went through. Uh, in, the, in the beginning of the session, uh, I showed certain questions and we solved these questions. Um, now. What we're going to do today is we're going to attempt some more questions and I'm going to uh, recap the parts of speech. In the next session, we will talk about an important aspect which is subject verb agreement. All right, let's begin. Let's look at the first question here. The small child does whatever his father was done. What you need to do is whatever is underlined in the question statement, you need to replace that with one of the options. Because the, the underlined word in the question statement could be wrong. I'm saying could be wrong. It means it's not essentially wrong. In case if it's not wrong, you're going to choose option number E, which is no correction required. All right. So, Essentially, the question has one particular phrase which could be right, it could be wrong. If it's wrong, you need to pick the right option. You need to correct it. If it's not wrong at all, obviously, you will pick option E which says no correction required. All right? It's basically sentence improvement. So let's look at question number one now. The small child does whatever his father was done. Now, it cannot be was done. The father was not done, the father has done or the father did. The small child does whatever or whatever his father did. So did is a correct answer because whatever the father did in the past, the child is going to do now. Question number two, the man who I sold my house was a cheat. Now, the man who I sold my, uh, sold my house. Now, you cannot say to who. It should be to whom. To whom I sold my 
house was a cheat. So option D is the correct answer. The man to whom I sold my house was a cheat. So option D is the correct answer. Next, number three, they were all shocked at his failure in the competition. They were all shocked at his failure at the competition, the options. They were shocked at all, no. They had all shocked at, definitely no. They had all shocked by, no. They had all been shocked on, definitely not. So, when we look at the question itself here, the question stem which says they were all shocked at his failure in the competition, it's no correction required because grammatically it's perfect. Number four, why should the candidates be afraid of English language is not clear. Now options, why the candidates should be afraid of English language is not clear. Now let me illustrate what, uh, now option A is the correct answer. So why the candidate should be afraid uh, be, uh, be afraid of English language is not clear. Let's look at option B. Why do the candidates be? Now, why do the candidates be does not really make sense. Why should be the candidates? Definitely not. Why the candidates be afraid? Now, since I have B here, I cannot pick option D. If the B does not exist, then I can say, why are the candidates afraid of English language is not clear? Then it's fine. But I have the B as part of the question. All I can replace is should the candidates. Now one important information or learning that I want to give you. If I have the word should before the noun, that means it's very, very likely to happen and I'm implying that it's going to happen. Okay, so if I have the should after noun, that means I am implying it. But if I have the noun followed by should, okay, I am inferring it. Inferring means I am just suggesting. So in this case, in this question, it says why should the candidates be afraid? When I am saying why should the candidates, that means I am saying that they are afraid of English language. But I am saying it's a probability. When I am talking about a probability, I am merely implying it, or sorry, inferring it, then that will be why the candidate should be. So I am just saying why the candidate should be afraid of English language is not clear. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Question number five. He found the gold coin as he cleans the floor. Now, cleans the floor. Let's look at the, the word itself. When I have cleans, it's present tense, okay? But if you look at the question, it says he found the gold coin as he cleans the floor. Now the word found is past tense. That means if I have the entire incident that happened in the past tense. Let me get rid of the grids. If the entire occurrence is in the past tense, I need to carry the same consistency. He found the gold coin as he cleans the floor? No. As he had cleaned the floor? Now, while the person was cleaning the floor, when I am saying while, that means in the course of that entire task. So, I need to have a continuous form here. So, let us look at what is a continuous option. He found the gold coin as he cleans the floor, as he had cleaned the floor, while he cleans the floor, which he is cleaning the floor or option D, while cleaning the floor. I am saying that while he was cleaning the floor, he found the gold coin. Hence, option D is the correct answer. So, the correct answer is, he found the gold coin while cleaning.
cleaning the floor. I need to pick uh, the continuous form because it happened in the past while the work was on the gold coin was found. All right. Number 6, because of his mastery in this field, his suggestions are wide accepted. Now it cannot be wide accepted, I need to have an adjective here, okay, oh, sorry adverb here. Why am I saying I need to have an adverb? I have the word, just a moment, I am sorry, I have the word wide followed by accepted, right. Now what part of speech accepted is? Accepted is verb in past tense. Let me, I am just trying to align it for you so that you can see it clearly. Okay. So, it says the question stem says wide accepted. Now, wide is what? Wide is an adjective, right? For example, I say I came, I was crossing the wide road. What road? Wide road. I am defining the road. In this case, I have a verb, so I am defining the verb. Now, what part of speech defines the verb? Yesterday we covered this. The part of speech which defines noun, I am just typing it, which means I need an adverb before this word. Okay. What is the example? Let me give you an example for you to understand. If I have to write an incorrect statement, um, If I have to write this sentence, okay. Now this is a grammatically incorrect statement, okay. Let me make this red. The train is slow moving, hence I would be late. Now if I have to correct it, the train is moving slowly, okay. Now, in this case, it says because of his mastery in this field, his suggestions are wide accepted. I need to use an adverb instead of the adjective here. So, I would say because of his mastery in this field, his suggestions are widely accepted, means lot of people accept his point of view. So, widely accepted. So, option A is the correct answer. All right, moving on, question number 7. We met him immediately after the session in which he had been given a nice speech. Now, when you say he had been given, that means somebody gave him something, but that is not the fact. The fact is he gave a speech at the, at the conference or at, at the session. So, had been given, had given, when you change the word, when you change the order of the word, the meaning changes. You got to be very careful about it. For example, the li form in, in English language, let me give you a quick example in terms of the li form. He is working hard. Now, if I say he is working hard, 
that means it is a very very good thing. Now, if I say he is hardly working that means he is not working at all. Okay. So, when I am using this L y form there is a shift in the entire meaning the inner meaning of what the sentence is all right that is why you got to be careful. Now, we had we met him immediately after the session in which he had been given a nice speech no he had been given for example, if it says we met him immediately after the session in which he had been given an award that means he received an award somebody gave him an award. In this case this person did not receive anything in fact, he gave a speech. So, that is why you will change you will pick one of the options all right let us look at the options now. We met him immediately after the session in which he would be giving he has been given he will have given he had given a nice speech. Now, why will I pick option D the correct answer is option D just think why would I pick option D it is simple I would pick option D because the question starts in a past tense mode we met him. Now, when do we say we met? So, my present tense is meet met will meet ok. Now, I can also have a continuous form in terms of meeting there are lot of words where where the where the spelling changes you cannot just put an ed for example, if it is work worked will work. Now, it does not work like that for example, eat the past tense is ate <coughs> will eat for example, dream the past tense is it is not dreamed it is dreamt will dream. These are some of the examples likewise you will find tons of these examples in the internet. So, that will help you. So, what I am doing let, let me put it in a much better way for your quick understanding all right. So, first I will mention the past, present and future we will go in this flow all right. So, let me expand this for you so that you can see this clearly. All right, let us start. So, if I have a simple word like work, it will be worked, work will work, right. But if I have the word like and so, this is played play I will play, but if I have the word like eat the past tense become eight. If I have dream it becomes dreamt all right let me remove the future tense form because it is all going to add will plus the present tense. Drink drank now there is another word which is drunk d r u n k drunk is an adjective it is not a past form or something are you drunk that means are you intoxicated. So, drunk is an adjective drank is past tense all right let us look at some more example for you. I, I am really hoping you guys are taking this down and you guys are watching this program I am not very really sure there is no way I can figure that out 
but I'm sincerely hoping that you guys are watching it. Okay, now if I have the present tense as no, the past tense is new. All right. If it's see, the past tense is saw. It's not seed. Like yesterday, I gave you some more example, right? Let me insert a column here. For example, if my present tense is bring, my past tense is brought. If my present tense is buy, my past tense is bought. So, do not get confused between bought and brought. Both have different meanings. Clear? All right, moving forward. So, we met him immediately after the session in which he had given a nice speech. Option D is the correct answer. Number 8, we were still standing in the queue when the film was beginning. Now, when I am when I'm saying that we were still standing in the queue, we were still standing in the queue means it is a past tense. I was standing in the queue when the movie started. So, basically in the movie started already. So, we were still standing in the queue when the film was beginning, no. When the film began, when the film had begun, beginning of the film was over, definitely not. When the film begins, now this is a continuous, uh, I mean it is not a straightforward uh, statement, this is pretty much a past tense. So, when the film had begun or when the film, so option B is the correct answer. We were still standing in the queue when the film when the film had begun, all right, Op, uh, option B. Question number 9, if I would have realized the nature of the job earlier, I would not have accepted it. Now, if I would have, again I would not have too much of repetition here. So, we need to correct this with the correct form. So, it should be had I, option D, had I realized the nature of the job earlier, I would not have accepted it. If I would have realized is not needed, you can just make it simple and straightforward and you can say, had I realized uh, the nature of the job earlier, I would not have accepted. Number 10, they failed in their attempt to repair the demolished portion of the building. They failed in their attempt to repair the demolished portion of the building. Options, they failed for the repair to attempt, sorry, uh, the, they failed for the attempt to repair, they failed in their attempting to repair, they failed with their attempt to repair, they failed in their attempt for repairs, it is just one repair. They failed in their attempt to repair the demolished portion of the building, no correction required. So, option A seems absolutely fine here, all right. Now, parts of speech, what have we covered so far? We have covered noun, pronoun, adjective, verb, adverb, tense, preposition. Now, article is not a part of speech, but I want to talk briefly about it, okay. <coughs> Let me open up another slide for you. Now, the common understanding or the common myth that we have in English languages, let me type the question. Here is your question. How many articles do we have in English language? Okay, that is a question. The options are 3, 2, 
four. Now these are the options you have with you. So you need to pick obviously the correct option here. So let me expand this just a bit more. Okay. Now those who are saying option three is the correct answer, they are saying this because what are the three articles? They are A, N, A and V, right. But those who are saying for obviously it is a wrong answer. Some people could be saying 2. Now what is the correct answer? This is what I am going to tell you. The correct answer is in fact 2. There are only 2 articles in English language. What are they? One is specific and the second one is generic. Okay. So, let me remove this. So, we have only two articles. So, the first one is specific and the second one is generic. Okay. So, please do remember they are not three, they are two only. Now, why am I saying there are only two articles? So, I also need to explain that, right? Now, in specific, we have the, in generic, we have A and N. So, this is something which you guys need to remember and understand. So, please do not get confused how many articles do we have. Okay? So, I am going to put this on slide mode. So, how many articles do we have in English language? No, we do not have three articles, we have only two. What are they? Number one, specific. Number two, generic. Specific means it is always T, H, E, D or the and generic means A and N. Now, when do we use A? When do we use N? Lot of people say we use A before consonants and before vowels. When do we pronounce T H E as the and when do we pronounce as the? If you know it, amazing. If you do not know, I am going to help you with. So, in the next session, I will explain to you why we have two articles and why people actually say there are three, which is wrong. I will help you understand when to use a and an, when to use the or the, when to pronounce the and when to pronounce the. I will explain that. We will have a quick exercise on articles as well, post which we will move to subject verb agreement. I will try to do as many exercises as possible so that you get, get the complete understanding. I will try also to incorporate a uh, verb and tense form in terms of phrasal verb and non-phrasal verb, constructing a sentence and all that so that your grammar foundation gets even more stronger. All right. So, next session please do tune in. We will talk about uh, understanding articles and the most important aspect subject verb agreement. I hope to see you. Please do practice. Please do post your questions so that I can understand if you are learning or not and I can provide you with the answer. All right. Thank you so much. I will see you soon.